Cyclone Olga reaches a fascinating Category 4 peak off Australia. Well, we've found another storm that's beaten all expectations and is still slowly moving in a southerly direction to our surprise as well today. A Category 4 now on the Sapphire Simpson scale, that would be Category 5 equivalent on the Australian scale. It's a 15.3 south, 119.2 degrees east at 8pm Australian Western Time this April 7th. With winds of 145 miles per hour sustained, that's 230 kilometers per hour, and an estimated pressure of 939 millibars, moving nearly due south at 9 miles per hour or 14 kilometers per hour. So here is the storm pictured, and it's a significant wind field, although it is fairly tight and compact. Uh, its position is fairly close to the coast of Australia, but it's fairly small wind field means that it's not going to be affecting land too much just at this moment. It is 247 kilometers from the Rowley Shoals, 435 from Broome, 522 from Derby, 562 from Port Hedland and 652 from Caratha. There are still no watches or warnings in effect from the Bureau of Meteorology. They're expecting the storm will turn at any minute and uh, really swipe towards the southwest and just avoid any land areas really possibly some tropical storm force winds briefly further down the line along the west coast. So we're still concerned for rip currents then, especially so now since the storm is much stronger and will be pushing more energy towards the shoreline. Uh, as said in, in previous updates, chances of a full cyclonic impact in Western Australia are still very low. Rough season rip currents are likely to occur all along the coast from the central Kimberley to Exmouth over the next few days. And that, of course, can be dangerous in and of itself. So here's the forecast over the next few days then with the wind field projection. And you can see it moving towards the southwest quite quickly and then really weakening very quickly as we enter the early part of this coming week. And off it goes. By midweek, it's gone. Uh, it probably doesn't even make it as far as Exmouth uh, equivalent um, before actually dying off and dissipating as a significant tropical cyclone at any rate and then off into the open ocean of the Indian Ocean. With 145 mile per hour sustained winds right now, it's certainly an upper echelon storm uh, with good agreement from the authorities as to what the intensity is, a fairly good agreement. The satellite estimates as, as high as 147 miles per hour um, and the view of meteorology lagging behind a little bit there going with 120 miles per hour equivalent on this chart. And here is the bomb chart, their forecast cone. Uh, they're going with Category 4 on the Australian scale there at their latest update, although that was a little while ago, and they're expecting weakening to ensue pretty soon. And then they also say there by the 9th, which is uh, Tuesday, for it to die off and become a remnant low. The GFS model, like pretty much any model right now, will be underestimating the peak of this storm, so there is a question mark as to whether it survives maybe a little bit longer than what the forecasts are saying, because obviously it's got a bigger climb down from that peak intensity. Nonetheless, the storm takes that course towards the west-southwest for a while. It does get somewhat close to Barrow Island and Exmouth, uh, and possibly tropical storm force winds for a brief period along those areas in the next two days. Whether it's still even a cyclone at that point is a question mark, but they certainly will get enhanced wind speeds in those areas. And then the centre moves well off over the open Indian Ocean. Looking at reflectivity, and you can see that most of the rainfall remains offshore, but there are one or two little bands that move through inland um, and sweep quite far down there you can see that band there holding on for quite a while before continuing to uh, actually die out as the storm itself does the same look again at those very high reflectivity values close to the center of the storm the southern side looking very good indeed at least until a couple of days go by when the structure looks like it collapses and then uh, there's not much left of it thereafter So let's check rain probabilities and we've been saying that the rainfall um, chances have been going down 
considerably and they are still very low. There's one or two little areas of uptick but really we're not looking at very high values at all and we're talking again around the Exmouth area could be seeing maybe a maximum of one inch 25 millimeters uh, but elsewhere along the coast it's a convenient little outline there uh, perpendicular to the storm uh, parallel to the storm I should say where the rainfall just doesn't quite get there but it follows of course very similar to that coastline just transposed further north. The storm itself, inside the storm, you could see up to 16 inches of rainfall near the core and that is uh, 400 millimetres but no one will be seeing that hopefully. Sea surface temperatures, what make it possible and it's still looking good around the storm as well. They're around 29 degrees Celsius, that's 84 degrees Fahrenheit on this chart. And those temperatures slowly decrease as it starts to move southwestward. But really, those temperatures look good all the way up until day 4 or 5. It's not the SSTs that will kill it off. It's probably going to be high wind shear as conditions at this time of year start to take a turn uh, against these storms. But it's met, certainly made the most of the window that it has had. Here's the latest satellite imagery and you can first thing you, I noticed at least is that it's still moving in a southerly direction and maybe even a slight eastward component there. You can check these satellites live on the Force 13 website force13.com slash satellite. Eye temperature is looking good earlier right now it's minus 17 uh, but earlier there were little glimpses of a much warmer eye temperature depicted by satellite uh, into the positives most likely and if it kept that appearance and it, who knows it may still get back to that level we could be looking at a borderline category 5 on the Sappho Simpson scale. Very uh, intense cloud tops well into the minus 80s and a pretty decent structure as well. Radar not showing very much but you can just about see that some of those outer menacing bands start to get closer to the coast on that view. And here's another look at just how picturesque the storm has been looking over the last few hours. The visible imagery today has been uh, pretty amazing and here is some more just as it was getting dark earlier. Really big a burst of convection on the western side of that eye as it started to get dark. That was a few hours ago now, uh, but really very impressive on the visible imagery. So in summary, uh, Olga is a very intense storm, but the threat to land hasn't changed very much. It remains fairly low. <laughs>